Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to express an absolute value function as a piecewise function. Okay, so first of all, we're going to consider the function f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. We're going to graph it first. Uh, you can use your calculator, whatever means you need to, um, but this, it's really easy. Okay, the absolute value of x. So I always start with zero. Absolute value of zero is zero. Okay, and then let's plug in some positive numbers. One, the absolute value of one is one. The absolute value of two is two. So forth and so on. So here's the right side of that function. It's just a straight line that has a slope of one. The left side, let's think about negative x values. The absolute value of a negative number is just a positive value. So negative one, the absolute value of negative one is positive one. So the left side looks almost exactly the same. It's a mirror image. Okay, what type of function is this? Based on what we were talking about earlier today? Even or odd? It's even because it's symmetric about the y-axis. It has a mirror image. Opposite x values have the same y values. Okay? But the way that I drew it there, I drew it specifically that way. The right side, before I drew the left side, the right side was a line. The left side, if I forget the right side, the left side is a line. So it turns out we can express this as a piecewise function. So the first question I want to ask is, where is its axis of symmetry? You just told me that it's even, so it, it is symmetric. What is, where is it symmetric? What goes right through the middle? The y-axis, right? x equals zero. That's its axis of symmetry. That's going to come into play here in a second. x equals zero. That's where it changes from the left side, that negative slope, to the right side with a positive slope. So... My next question is, could we write a linear equation to represent the left side of the graph? Okay, the left side, what's the slope of the left side? Negative 1. What's its y-intercept? 0. So, the left side of this graph could repre be represented by y equals negative x. How about the right side? y equals positive x because it has a slope of positive 1. It also has a y-intercept of 0. So it's not in piecewise form, but we just essentially wrote the piecewise equation here. So if we put them together, here's what I want you to put beside that f of x. You've got to put, we call it a brace. Okay, it looks like a squiggly um, parentheses. Okay, but the left side was negative x, comma, we're going to say x is less than 0, okay? That's the left side. You don't, I mean, technically the words are not part of the piecewise equation, but it helps, okay? And then the right side, y equals positive x when x is greater than 0. It really doesn't matter which one gets the equal to. Usually I put it on the second one. But it really doesn't matter, and here's the reason why it doesn't matter. If we look at the graph, as opposed to most of the questions we just dealt with, these two pieces do meet. Okay, This is a continuous piecewise function to tie everything that we've talked about today together. This one is continuous because there's no gap. The two pieces meet right there in the middle, and there's no... Um, break in the graph, so to speak. Okay, so that's why it doesn't matter where the equal to goes, because they match up. So it doesn't matter whether you put the open circle first, because it's going to get filled. Um, so, anyways, that is expressing it as piecewise function. On Monday, we'll look at not just the absolute value of x, we'll add some stuff to it, absolute value of x minus 1 plus 3. We'll see how we write those as piecewise functions.